Tron, my guest today and all this week is well-known movie critic, educator, lecturer, and media pundit, Dr. Ted Baer. He's the founder and publisher of Movie Guide and chair of the Christian Film and Television Commission. He's also the author of a number of books, including The Media Wise Family, Getting the Word Out, and So You Want to Be in Pictures. You may recognize him from guest appearances on Oprah, CNN, and Entertainment Tonight. Please welcome Dr. Ted Baer to 100 Huntley Street. Now, it's great to be with you again. Wonderful to have you here. It's been a few years. It's been a few years, and I'm, I'm shocked that there's no snow, actually. That's <laughs> <laughs> We're all shocked. This is really nice. It's more like springtime. Yeah, having grown up up in the Northeast, I love snow. So, I, yeah. Well, I want to talk to you about your work, particularly over the last three decades in influencing, actually five decades, so you've right. been doing this for 50 years, um, influencing the entertainment industry. But first, your own personal story is so compelling. You have to tell us how this all started in the now first Now you want place. the six-hour version, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was looking for about the 10-minute version. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, my parents were actors, and uh, they went into Hollywood in the 1920s, way back when, when most people don't remember, because of the Great Depression. My father graduated from Dartmouth near the top of his class, and uh, he was a cowboy star, and they gave him the name Tex Allen. So if anybody remembers Tex Allen, the Texas Rangers. So I grew up in a non-Christian home, a very... Uh, eclectic, what we would call new age, mm. pagan, uh, not understanding religion, but sort of relying on luck or whatever it could be. And uh, I was, I, when my mother died in about 1960, at the age of 52, when I was 14, I became very anti-faith mm -hmm. and very anti-Christian. In fact, when I went to law school, I went to Dartmouth and NYU Law School in Cambridge and University of Bordeaux and Toulouse mm -hmm. and Munich. I became <laughs> so... I became a card-carrying member of the National Lawyers Guild, which was a communist organization. Uh, but my father, since he was a handsome movie star and, mm -hmm. and stage star, women would date him, and many of them were Christians. And a oh, couple yeah. of them kept taking him to these Christian events. And to protect himself, he would take me as his um, chaperone. Right. So one of them, I walked out of the event, and I said, this guy's crazy. You know, he's talking about faithfulness to your wife. He's talking about decency. I don't believe in any of this. So the woman said, why don't you just read the Bible and tell me what's wrong with it? And every week, my father, who wasn't about to read the Bible, said, have you read the Bible yet? And I said, <laughs> okay, I see that there's a he small <laughs> section. There's this new part of the Bible that may be a little easier. And this was the King James. So I'm reading the begats, and I said, I can't really read this. And then I start again. And finally, I get halfway through Matthew. And I said, this is a true story. You know, God moved on my heart. I didn't know it was God moving on my heart, but I knew it was a true story. Even with all my education at Cambridge and everything else, I said, this rings a bell. And then a couple of months later, I decided, well, you know, I have to get married. We have to settle down. We have to have children. My whole worldview was changing, and I was financing feature films that I wouldn't even want to mention on the air with you. So uh, a week before we were going to get married by a friend of mine who was a justice of the peace was way out on the left side of the world. He was gay and the mm -hmm. two witnesses were gay. Um, I came to Christ. A woman said, do you want to accept Jesus Christ? And I said, yes. And she looked at my wife who had grown up Catholic and mm -hmm. my wife looked, oh, that sounds awful. I married a mm -hmm. producer and now he's right. become a priest. This is awful. <laughs> <laughs> and then the woman said, do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? And I just became on fire for the Lord. And quickly I said, we've got to get another wedding. We've got to get ministers in here. We've got to find people of faith. So six months later, so I've been married twice to the same woman. <laughs> <laughs> How did and you then I went to seminary and the seminary didn't yeah. believe in Christ. Uh -huh. The seminary was an Episcopal seminary where the bishop said, I don't believe in conversion. I said, well, I don't know. I was stuck in the movie industry and mm -hmm. I was, grew up in a trunk and it was locked most of the time going from stage show to stage show. And, uh, here I've come to Christ. I don't think I did anything about it. God reached out and grabbed me in the middle of nowhere, and he turned my life around. Now, I wasn't one of these stories where you're down and out mm -hmm. when you come to Christ. My, my son always says, this is not a good testimony because you've got to reach bottom before you come to Christ. And I don't believe that for a second. I've, I think when no, you... No, if anything, you're, you're at the top of your game. At the top of my game. I just brought in about $160,000 commission on mm -hmm. financing films. But it was just the truth of the gospel you know, Jesus is truth, that suddenly cut through all the morass of, I started being asking myself, what kind of a movie is this that I'm doing? You know, uh, uh, you know, the teenage slasher movies and things. This is awful. I became repelled by what I was doing. And of course, because I got to that point, I started saying, 
we got to clean up the whole movie industry. I didn't realize before how bad it was. How did your wife react? She came to Christ five years later. Five years later. Oh, we went through some interesting times because we were both studying with Strasbourg and, you know, I was doing uh, bit parts and things and I was up for a major role mm -hmm. in a, uh, you know, and you get passionate when you're doing yeah. acting classes. So she threw my food out the window of our brownstone once. I was wondering what was happening to the people downstairs. And, oh my. <laughs> yeah, but she came to Christ after uh, going up to a charismatic church service, uh, St. Paul's and Darianne, and we had our conceived of our first child that day, and they've all godly, wonderful children who want to become missionaries. And I'm greatly disappointed because I thought they could become rich and famous and support my mission. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very happy about it. Take care of you. <laughs> They're all good. good. Two of them haven't watched yeah. TV for seven years, so I can't even show them our gala. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing. God has blessed me tremendously. How did you know back in 1975 when you opened up the Bible and earnestly read it for the first time that what you were reading just resonated with truth? Well, first place, you know, 60% of the people, my, my, one of my sons worked with Wycliffe, which is a Bible translator. It goes into, and Wycliffe is actually appreciated by anthropologists around the world because they've translated more languages than any other group. But Wycliffe says about 60% of the people come to Christ who are reading the Bible.